Thank you, Dr. Blue. I appreciate that invitation. We've had a wonderful revival this week. God has certainly blessed. I want to bring a message in Hebrews chapter 11, reading in verse 39 and verse 40. On there's something better ahead. Let us pray. Father, I pray you'll take this message, bury it in the hearts of every individual that listens, meet every need in every life, and we'll thank you and praise you in your precious name. Amen. In verse 39, these all, having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Paul was warning these Hebrew Christians to realize there was something better ahead. There's something better than law. There's grace. There's something better than Moses. There is Christ. And the Bible says Christ is the answer. And he's saying there's something better than the blood of goats and bulls. There is the blood of Jesus Christ. We find in verse 39, God's promise. And in verse 40, we find God's provision. And thank God's provision you and for that. Amen. I thank God for Moses. You know why he said this? Because he said, I've got something better ahead. Amen. I can see him now when they're talking to Moses. Why? Why are you willing to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter? And he said, I've got something better ahead. I've got Canaan to look forward to. Amen. Thank God he had Canaan. Amen. Amen. And I believe when you turn loose of the world and the things of the world, there's something better ahead for you. Amen. And old Moses had that in mind when he said, I've got Canaan to look forward to. Then I think of Lot there in the city of Sodom when God said, I'm going to destroy this city. And I can see now, Lot didn't have to come out of that city. Abraham said, let me get my nephew out of there. And God said, if you can find 40, 30, 20, 10 righteous people, I'll spare that city. And couldn't even find 10. That's right. but thank God I want to say here that Lot did not. He didn't have to come out of the city. He had a choice to stay in or get out. But he had something burning inside saying, there's something better than this. Hey, and he come out of that wicked city. And I thank God for that. I think of the prodigal son. The prodigal son, when he told his father, I want everything I've got coming to me. I'm leaving home. And the Bible said he went down into a foreign country and joined citizens down there. And the Bible said he'd wasted all of his substance. And he had to eat with the pigs. Do you know what? You can criticize a prodigal son if you want to. He had enough sense to come out of the pig pen. Amen. The Bible Amen. said he came to his senses. And he said, my father's got hired servants eating better than I'm eating. I can see him now when he came out of that pig pen. And he said, I'm going home. And I'm glad that when he said, and the Bible said the father was looking afar off. That's faith, isn't it? That's right. He believed his son was coming home. And the Bible said he was looking far off and they run to meet each other and the prodigal son said, I'm willing to go home and just be a servant. And the father threw his arms around him and kissed him on the neck and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and said, kill the fattest calf and put a robe on his back said, my son that was lost, he's home. And the father said, I want you to notice something. The prodigal son was willing to come home and be a servant. But the father said, no, you're coming home as my son. Amen. He said, you're not going to go down as a servant. You're coming home as my son. Isn't that the way the Lord is? Doesn't make any difference how low down and rotten you are. If you're a backslider, he says, you come home. You come home and my arms are stretched out to forgive you and cleanse you from all your sin." I want to say to you listening this here today that if you'll come home doesn't make any difference what kind of condition you're in or what shape you're in if you'll come home He'll forgive you and cleanse you from all your sins. That's the kind of Lord I have. I'm glad I'm not God. I'll tell you He's got a heart and it's long suffering. Sorry and rotten as some people get and yet He says I'll forgive you and I'll cleanse you. You may be listening here and I want to say, whether you're listening on this record or in this service, that if you're a backslidden, you're not right with God, you can come home. 
And he said, I'll forgive you and I'll cleanse you as though you've never sinned. I think yonder of Abraham. I think of Abraham there in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. We see him wandering in the wilderness, dwelling in tents. I can see him now. Abraham, why? Why, Abraham, why? Why are you willing to dwell in tents? And Abraham said, I'll tell you why. I'm looking for a city. I'm looking for a city. Whose builder and maker is God. Abraham looked for a city. And John the Revelator saw that city. And bless God, I'm a going to that city. What a day that's going to be. I want to repeat that again. I like that. Amen. Amen. Abraham said, I am looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. And John the Revelator said, I saw that city. And bless God, Carl Hatch is a going to that city. Amen. What a day that's going to be. I'm willing. I'm willing to wander in the wilderness and live in tents because I've got a city. Amen. I've got a city. Bless God, it didn't bother Abraham. He knew he had something better ahead. Amen. Amen. He had a home. He had a, he had a city to look forward to. I think of Paul there in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 and 8 when Paul said, I'm, I'm going home. He said, I fought a good fight. I have kept the faith and I finished the course. Oh, Paul said, I'm going home. He said, I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Paul said, I'm willing to go through all of this. I'm looking for a crown. Amen. Amen. Oh, Paul said, bless God, I'm willing to go through all the persecution. I'm willing to pay the price because I'm looking for a crown. And I want to say to you here, if you're a child of God, he says in verse 8 of that chapter, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, you and I have a crown. The crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I can see him now. Paul, why? Why, Paul, are you going through all of this? Why are you paying the price? Why are you willing to suffer? And old Paul said, I'll tell you why. I'm looking for a crown. And the crown I'm going to get is the crown of righteousness. And the Lord himself is going to present it to me. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Yes, God, that'll get you excited to think. I can see somebody coming up to offer me that crown. And the Lord says, get back. (laughs) Get back. I'm personally going to present this crown. The crown of righteousness. That's going to be a day, isn't it? Not only did he have something to look forward to, but I want to say to you and I, Paul also said, he said, I'm willing to run the race. You know what Paul said? He said, laid up for me. I like that. Amen. Amen. Laid up for me uh, that I hadn't seen uh, and ear hadn't heard uh, and neither into the heart of man uh, the things that God had prepared uh, for them that love Him. Uh, that's why He run this race today. Because we've got something better ahead. Amen. When you get discouraged, you get down, think about it, uh, that you've got something better to look forward to Amen. than what this world has got to offer. Then I want to say to the Christian, I'm glad the Christian's got something better to look forward to. If this is the only hope I had, I'd, t- I'd take a shotgun and blow my brains out. That's right. Thank God I have something better than this. Amen. 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 That's why as a child of God, that's why John said in John 14, Carl, don't let your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go, I will positive come again and receive you unto myself. If where I am there, you may be also. I want to say as a child of God, we've got something beyond this world. This is not our home. And thank God we've got something to look forward to. As a child of God. Isn't it, isn't it great to be saved? Yeah, right. Let me say to you listening, if you have never been redeemed by the blood, what do you, who you got to turn to? Man, who you got? Go down to the bar. Go down to the bar and ask that fellow to help you. All he'll do is sell you another drink. You go to that one giving you them drugs. 
You ask for help, and all they'll do is ask you to pop another pill. But I want to say to you that Christ is the answer. If you're a child of God, you need to say, I've got something better than this. If you're not a child of God, then He is the answer. Amen. Thank God He's the answer. Amen. And I want to say to the Christian, we've got much to look forward to. Amen. 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 Just to think. That's right. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine I hadn't even seen Ear hadn't even heard. Amen. Amen. Never entered the heart of man thing God's got prepared for them that love Him. Folks, we've got a future. Amen. We've got something beyond this world. That's right. And thank God we have. Amen. Let me say also to you, if you're here and you're a sinner, you have never been saved, you have never been born again, never been redeemed with the blood, there is something better ahead for you. And that that's better ahead is not a pistol in the head. It's not a needle in your arm. It's not going out with the booze for you if you're a sinner lost. There is something better ahead for you. Jesus said, I am the way. John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yeah. Why you say I've been baptized? That's not the answer. That's right. Why you say I'm a Baptist? That's not the answer. That's right. You say, oh, I'm a Catholic. That's not That's the answer. Right. You say, oh, I'm a Pentecost. That's not That's the answer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yeah. Hey, some of you listening to me, you've been baptized. You've gone through all the rituals. If you were to bow your head and die with a heart attack, you don't have the assurance that heaven's your home and Christ your Savior. But let me say to you, uh, unsaved people, you can be cleansed. Amen. So you've never sinned. Amen. Isaiah one eighteen says, Come now and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, there shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Did you know that you can be cleansed? As white as though you have never sinned. Amen. Thanks be unto God. I look back at my life and I look back and I'm sure Pastor Blue can look back to his life. I, I'm sure he can look back when he was nothing, when he was a hell-bound, no-good, derby, deserving sinner, doomed and damned for hell, and cried out and asked the Lord to save him and was cleansed and made hold. I'm sure that Brother Hughes could say the same thing, but thanks be unto God that He can cleanse us and make us whole. Amen. I'm glad He said not only that, but He said in 1 John 1, 7, the blood. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, I cleanse us from all sin. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. From all sin. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference what you've done. He can cleanse you. Amen. I've had people to come to me and say, you mean, you mean to tell me I can be made cleansed and made whole as though I've never sinned? I said, yes, you can. Amen. I had a man just a few days ago, 85 years of age, had been living deep in sin. And he said, you mean a man of my age that I can come? I said, sir, you'll have to come as a little child and say, Lord, I'm a sinner lost and doomed and damned. And I want you to save me and cleanse me. And you can be made whole. He said, I'll do it. Amen. I'll do it. John 1 died, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just. That means He won't lie. Amen. 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 To forgive us from all unrighteousness. Amen. I like that. Amen. Amen. Did you get that? Yeah, I got if it. we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thanks be unto God, He can take your life and make it over again. Right. Let me say to you tonight, I was in a, in a revival here some months back. Dear old man way back in the back, and I noticed while I was preaching, Tears running down his face. I started giving the invitation, and I can't remember what I was preaching. I started giving the invitation, and they began to come. This dear old gentleman was coming down the aisle, could hardly walk. And he got down to the front, and the tears streaming down his eyes. And he said, is there hope for me? Is there hope for me? I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, there's hope. 
As long as there's air coming out of your body, as long as you're able to breathe, and you're willing to say, I'll confess my sins, and ask Him to save you, He'll come down and cleanse you. And make you hold that dear old gentleman nailed to the altar. And he cried out, and oh, I asked the Lord to save him. And here's what he said. He got up and he sang. And I began to think of that song. There's a song out called, It's Real. It's real, it's real. I know it's real. Praise God, the debts are settled. I know, I know it's real. He got up off his knees and looked up and he said, it's real. It's real. And here's what he said when he got off his knees and said, it's real. He said, I've got something. I've got something better ahead. I've got something to look forward to. And thanks be unto God, you can have that today. You come with faith, believing and receiving as Lord and Savior. You'll have a home. You'll have a mansion not made by man, but by God. And it'll be reserved in heaven for you and nobody can get it. Right. Nobody can get it. Right. So let me say in closing, number one, number one, you can come if you're a backslider. You can come and say, Lord, I'm sorry like a father forgives his son. Let me tell you something. I had one time a preacher told another preacher, said you ought to kick your son out. Go to kick him out. And I said, oh my God, no, don't kick him out. Don't kick him out. Amen. Let me say to you, don't kick your children out. Jesus loves them and He'll help you and take care of those children. But for God's sake, don't kick them out. That's right. Christ is the answer. Amen. I was so thrilled when that dear old gentleman got saved and he cried out and said, I found something better ahead. Amen. 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 I had a man gave away millions of dollars trying to get saved, went to the Holy Land trying to get saved, and he came forward in, my, in one of my services and accepted the Lord as Savior, and he looked up, the tears streaming down his face, and he said, I've given millions. I've given away money. I've gone to the Holy Land. I've done all of this. But he said, tonight, I got saved and it didn't cost me anything. And I got something better ahead. Thank God. Number one, if you're a backslider, you can come home. As a father forgave the prodigal son and said, welcome home, my son. Welcome home, my son. You come home today. As a backslider, I don't care who, who who don't like you. If they've criticized you, if they've made fun of you, you can come home and he'll put his arms around you and say, "You're forgiven. You're forgiven." Right. If you're here and you're lost, you've never accepted him. You come by faith and he'll save you and cleanse you, as though you've never sinned. Let us pray. Let us pray. With every head bowed, every eye closed, and while they're coming to play and sing the invitation. With every head bowed, every eye closed, and no one looking around, please. I wonder tonight, while every head is bowed, every eye closed, would you lift your hand and say, Brother Hatch, God spoke to me tonight. Maybe you're a backslider, maybe you're away from God, or, or maybe you're not saved. Remember there's things in your life you say, I want to come home. I want to come home. I have a real need in my life, and I want you to pray for me. Would you lift your hand? Would you lift your hand? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else, just slip your hand up. Pray for me. Thank you. Put them down. Thank you. Put them down. While the music director leads us in the invitation, would you stand please and sing it with him? What page is it, sir? 283. Page 283. Would you sing it, please? Would you sing it, please? And you that lifted your hand, if God spoke to you, you come. You come. You come. Listen to it now. Now I'm coming home. The pass of sin to long I've trod. Lord, I'm coming home. While she's playing softly, Father, I pray you'll take this coming message buried in the hearts of the people. While they're coming now, will you bless it, Lord? Will you bless us invitations that goes and reaches thousands? May there be people who trust you as Lord and Savior. In your name I pray.